All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, before I get started, as always, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, Wahabrachakwadash, with Yahweh, that's the name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai, that's from the world, ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, that's his true name. And the Rachakwadash, that is the Holy Spirit. And I also want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach all the scriptures. And salutations to all the brothers out there who are pushing his word in all truth and in all sincerity. And I want to get into a lesson that's based on this statement that this uh, Venezuelan migrant had made. And the statement that he said was, the American dream doesn't exist anymore. All right. And you see a lot of these, uh, a lot of these uh, migrants, all right, hey, they were sold lies, basically, okay? You know, they were told that, you know, once they get to America, you know, they'll be able to find jobs easily, all right? You know, that they'll, they'll be able to take care of themselves and their families. And, you know, they can live a, you know, happily ever after life. And you see, you know, people... Especially these foreigners, right? They don't realize that the American dream is just a dream, okay? It's actually, I'll say this, it's really a nightmare. You know, you know, this place isn't designed for you to, you know, get ahead. You're not going to get help like that, all right? Hey, everybody's struggling here. You know, and I'm saying even the, uh, you know, the, 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 the regular American citizen, they're struggling. So these people who are foreigners, you know, you, you think you're going to get help? You think you're going to, you know, succeed? You know, a, a, you, like I said, you've been sold a lie. And now reality's kicking in, all right? You know, hey, look, these migrants... You know, they're, they're starting to deal with the uh, the harsh winters, you know, especially out here in Chicago. And, uh, and uh, the rough season hasn't even hit yet, but they're starting to feel it now. You know, temps are getting into the 30s at night. Okay. You know, hey, the, 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 wind, the wind is picking up. You know, there's a... Uh, they don't have, you know... You know, secure shelter. A lot of them are still sleeping in tents outside. These people don't have their um, work permits. They're not, um, I'll say this, there's only so many, you know, jobs that they can, you know, get with getting, you know, cash under the table. You know what I mean? There's only so many of those jobs. So these people are struggling. Okay? Hey, they're uh, a lot of their um a lot of the money that they received, you know, that the aid money is uh now used up. So these people are, are really starting to feel it. And you see, as the scriptures say in Micah 2 and 10, arise ye in the part, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted, it shall destroy you. Even with the sore destruction. And you see, with our people, the Israelites, which that consists of you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. This place, all right, or I'll say this, this kingdom that's uh, established in the world, which a, has a scripture say in the book of Revelation, it talks about what? The beast, right? You know, the beast system. Which is run by whom? Esau Edom, the so-called white man. Look, this is not your rest. All right? This is not your rest. It doesn't matter if you're in America, South America, Africa, the Caribbean islands, Europe, Asia. Wherever you're at, this is not your rest. Okay? And you see these, these Venez uh, uh, Venezuelans... They're starting to realize that, you know, they're starting to realize that, all right, because let me get this real quick. It doesn't matter where you go, 
these curses are going to follow you. Okay? You know, this is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. I'm going to have to start at 64, but the main point points are a little bit further down. This is Deuteronomy 28 and 64. And the Lord Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. So the Lord's telling us that we're going to be all over the world. All right? All over. Okay? And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shall thou find no ease. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, meaning your mind, a and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind, and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt have no assurance of thy life. You see? We're not going to have any ease. We're going to be stressed out. We don't know we're gonna, if we're going to be you know, coming or going. All right. And like I said, these uh, Venezuelans, they're starting to realize that now. All right. You know. Here we go. Let me read a little bit of this. This article here says now Illinois harsh winters, lack of migrant infrastructure and am Ambivalent support from local locals have made many people who undertook the harsh U.S.-Mexico border journey actually turn around and go back home. You see, even though they went through the trenches, they and, and, and hey, I'll say this: just getting to America was a life or death situation for these migrants, right? E e even though they 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 took that life or death journey. A lot of them said, you know what, I, we need to go back home. It's too much for us, you know? And I've seen the conditions of those, you know, migrants, all right? It's not good. You'll have, you know, approximately, let's just say 100 people living in a, a, um, a police department, you know? You got about 30 people outside. Not even exaggerating, by the way. About 20 to 30 people outside. You got about, like I said, a good 50, 60, 70 people inside. Stacked up. They don't know what to do. You know, they're just, you know, walking around aimlessly. Waiting for something to happen and nothing's happening. You know? You see, you got the you know the the the, the you know the, the regular citizens getting mad. They're not in, you know inviting. And out here in Chicago, you actually had in one of the parks where um, some of these migrants were at. They literally got attacked. I think they you know it was you know it was like the you know those teenagers. You know what I'm saying. Probably like 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, whatever. And they ended up brawling some uh, uh, some of these migrants. You know? It's, it's rough. It's rough for these migrants, man. Yeah, but they, these are the curses. Okay? But let me keep reading. It says... um. Venezuelan-born Michael Casta Costa Costa Hon, uh, thirty-nine, and his family have been sleeping on floors of police stations, and I just mentioned that, and shelters, after he could not afford to pay rent in Chicago. Oh, well, that's another thing too. Rent is sky high, you know, out here in Chicago, even in the uh, uh, in the ghettos now. A thousand dollars, man, just to uh, to run out of spot. You know. Let's keep reading. It says, 
because his work permit was taking so long to arrive. And I know that they got to wait like six months or something. I forgot. It's, it's something. Uh, uh, it's about six months before they can even get anything. You know? And then good luck finding a job. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Good luck finding something after you even get the permit. Because there's no jobs out here. It says the family was running an apartment through a city voucher program that gives up to $15,000 for up to six months of rental assistance. But once it ran out, they had to give up their living space. The dad found a job in construction and he was getting paid in cash, but it wasn't enough to sustain his family since they arrived in June. And you know, they're underpaying them heavily. All right. You know, let's say the guy, you know, the regular guy is getting paid 25, 30 an hour or whatever. He's probably getting paid 15. Busting his butt off, not even uh, uh, making anything. And he can't even, you know, uh, afford a, a place for him and his family. There you go. Here's the police stations. Like, like I told you, there'll be about 30, 40, 20, 30, 40 people outside. You can see it. You know, let me just read a little bit more here. It says, after five months of rough living with no end in sight, the family decided to pack up their belongings and return to South America, realizing that there's nothing here for us. Costa Hon uh, said the f failed journey to uh, settle in the U.S. had not been worth it, despite the extreme poverty and, uh, and enough authoritarian regime they were living under in Venezuela in Venezuela after months of begging for money and crossing borders the dreams that he had heard of from other migrants had failed to materialize for himself he revealed it says the American dream doesn't exist anymore there's nothing uh, here for us we didn't know things would be this hard I thought the process was faster. He said the job permit situation, uh, he said about the job permit situation in Chicago. You see, you know, the, these people are realizing that this is not, you know, sweet living over here. It's rough. Okay. And like I said, even if, you know, he gets the work permit and all that, you're barely going to find a job. And you're going to be struggling to, to, to make ends meet, you know. At least out there in, uh, uh, in Venezuela, you know, people, um, one, speak the same language, eh, you know, it's the same culture. You know, two, eh, they have, you know, their family over there. You know, uh, uh, three, if you are homeless, at least it's warm o over there. And they have fruit trees everywhere. Unlike here in America, you can't even pick you know, uh, uh, you know, a couple, you know, pieces of fruit from a tree j just to sustain yourself. You know, out here they destroyed all anything that produces, you know, any type of you know fruit to eat. See. So yeah, man, these uh, the, 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 these these Venezuelans are really starting to feel it, and all these uh, other migrants, man. All right. But let me get maybe one or two more scriptures and I'll be done. All right. Let's get the book of Hebrews. I think it's like the 13th chapter. This is uh, Hebrews 13 and 14. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. And as the scriptures say, this place is not our, our rest. All right. We don't have a continuing city. You know, we don't have a place that's, you know, really ours where we set up our own rules where we, where we can, you know, pass well down to, you know, our children and their children, you know, so on and so forth. This is, you know, one hey, this is smoke and mirrors. That's all it is. It's a fantasy. It's not reality. Reality is our people are still in slavery, still in captivity. You know? This is why you should be seeking a 
the, the true kingdom, which is the kingdom of Yahweh Shem Shai, what this place will call the kingdom of heaven. You know, that's what you should be seeking. Not this stuff in this place. All right. There's nothing here. There's nothing here. You know, see, our, our, our people are, 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 are realizing that this is not, you know, a, um, this is not a, a good place to be. See? You know, they, that's why scriptures talk about a, a return unto the Lord. It talks about that you know, throughout the entire Bible. Our people need to return unto the Lord so that they can be saved, all right, from the condition that they're in. That's all we got to do. You know, but our people, they still try to find, you know, other ways to, you know, to escape their problems. And every time they do, they're going to fail. You know? But... You know, I'll just end the uh, end the lesson. You know, I just wanted to you know talk about this because I you know I saw this uh, this article a couple days ago. I saw footage of it too, but for some reason I couldn't find the footage. <coughs> Having a <coughs> hard time, you know, getting that that that, that footage uh, that I once saw. But you know, at least we got the article here. All right, and uh. No, I just hey, wanted to show you that no matter where our people go, you know they're gonna uh, they're gonna go through hardships. And you 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 know you Jakes, best thing for, for you to do is to uh, return unto Yahweh Shem Al Shai. You know, but uh, with that, I'm gonna give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Shem Al Shai. Also, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all you brothers out there. Shalom.